Once you've created your arrangement, you have a number of options working in the arrangement view for editing and mixing the arrangement. We're going to take a look at some of those options here, and then we're going to close things out by looking at some of Live's exporting options, including some new options available in Live 7. So here's the arrangement that I've created, which you saw at the end of the last movie, and I'm in Live's arrangement view. Now the arrangement view may be more familiar to those of you who have worked with other digital audio programs such as Logic or Acid or GarageBand. It's a linear look at our arrangement and I can start playback by double clicking on the stop button and starting from zero. I can also move my mouse over to what's called the scrub area here where it turns into a speaker icon and start playback from locations within my arrangement. I can add more loops in the arrange view by selecting a loop in the browser and just dragging it onto an empty spot and create a new track. And I can elongate loops. I can drag them around and rearrange them. Let's delete this using the Command Z or Control C on the PC to undo the things I've done. So I can change my arrangement here by clicking and dragging and moving things around or by elongating it at any time. Over here we've got something very similar to the view options that you saw in the arrange view, though a little bit different. And these are the show hide options here, these buttons down here. And we want to make sure for our purposes that our I.O. in out and our mixer section are showing. Each track has what's called an unfold track button, and I can unfold this track. And as you can see, I can view the waveform for the track, and what's visible right now is the track volume for my track. And what I can do here is select this and raise or lower the volume of my track. And I can also do the same thing over here by clicking and dragging down or up to adjust the volume of individual tracks. So I'm going to select this track choose the mixer from what's called the device chooser and choose track volume from the control chooser menu and again I can adjust the volume for this track as well. Moving on to the master track I'm going to select track volume close these up here now I want to elongate the end of this song so I can create a fade out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a loop. And I'm going to control A or command A click to select all of my loops. I'm going to click and drag out and expand all of these loops a bit further. And now I can view the whole arrangement. I've got my mixer and track volume showing here. I'm going to double click and create what's called a breakpoint and double click a second time. I've created two breakpoints and I'm lowering this one and I've created a fade out. Let's hear how that sounds by clicking up in the scrub area. Alright, so I think I'm ready to export my live set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here in what's called the loop punch recording region. This is also the export brace. Uh, anything that's within this selected range will be included when I start to export my live set. I'm going to go to Live's File menu and I'm going to choose Export Audio Video, which is new in Live 7. In previous versions of Live, it was just Export Audio. And this is going to bring up my Export Audio Video dialog window. I'm going to make some choices here that are going to be very important to the exporting process. First, I'm going to choose the Rendered Track drop down menu here and make sure that Master Track is chosen. I also have the option to export individual tracks and even my return tracks, but I want to export my entire mix, so I'm choosing Master Track. Now I can also select Normalize, and that means that Live will export my audio and make it as loud as it can possibly be, 
without distorting. Renderer's loop functionality is used for exporting individual loops or looped sections. We're definitely going to leave that off here because we're not creating any kind of loop. File type, I can choose WAV or AIFF. Those two formats are pretty much interchangeable these days, though generally, historically, on a Mac, you'd choose AIFF, and on Windows, you'd choose WAV. I'm not going to convert to mono because I don't want to do that. I'm going to choose a sample rate of 44.1 and a bit depth of 16. And those are standard settings for creating uh, CDs. If you're going to be sending your stuff out for mastering, you may want to look at some other options as well. I'm not going to worry about dithering. I'm going to go ahead and use the default triangular dithering option. And I'm not going to create an analysis file because that's something that you would be doing if you were going to be using your exported audio and bringing it back into live. And we'll look at analysis files a bit later on. Since we're not working with video here, I don't have to worry about my video settings, but I do want to point out that Live 7 does contain new video encoding functionality for uh, both importing and exporting video with audio. And that's very exciting and a very cool new feature in Ableton Live 7. So I'm ready to export, and I'll just go ahead and click the OK button. And I'm going to choose a location for my song. And a name. And I'm going to save this to my desktop. And Live is exporting my audio. You can see that happening pretty quickly. And the file is now on my desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So you can hear the exported final song. So that's a look at uh, quickly creating, arranging, and exporting a song in Ableton Live. Throughout this course, we'll be looking at all of the things that we've done in this movie, and we'll be examining each of these pieces of functionality in much more detail, along with a whole lot of other great stuff that's available in Ableton Live 7.